Aubrey, if you were put away in jail, um, do you think you could break out successfully? Oh, that's a terrible question. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Whenever I watch like a prison break show, I'm like, that's not, no, that's not happening. <laughs> or whatever they do, I'm like, I wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> I'd be stuck think- in there. So we are talking about those two phrasal verbs. We have a lot of amazing vocab to talk about today, guys, that will increase your IELTS score because phrasal verbs, especially the ones today, I would call most of these definitions um, as being idiomatic, honestly. Like these are some really high level phrases today, but um, the number one break out of jail movie, Shawshank Redemption right so good best yes. movie <laughs> but that same thing right he's like digging a huge tunnel uh, like the logistics of something no. like that i know it happens <laughs> but i don't think any of them are like realistic like- you know, know right? <laughs> all right so guys let's get into this we had a very interesting comment on one of our youtube videos um it was high scoring housework IELTS speaking answers so we gave you sample answers about housework um and that was episode 1174 definitely check that out on youtube guys um but a subscriber on YouTube, Beauty Passion, asked this question, which kind of confused me and interested me at the same time and ended up inspiring a whole episode about phrasal verbs. So, um, Aubrey, can you read the comment? Yes. So, hello, I have a question. If I want to separate my clothes or change them, depending on the season, what is the word that I can use? So, and we're you- thinking, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, there might be a word for this in other languages, but there isn't like one word or phrase for this in English, you know? No, right? Yeah, we we some people, I don't do this because it's kind of the same weather here year round, but some people <laughs> sort of transition their autumn wardrobe to a winter wardrobe, but yeah, sure. there isn't really vocabulary for that. Yeah, the the only way I could understand this was to think about how, um, like, I have to do this, right? Because our seasons are crazy extreme in both directions. So I do have to, like, in late spring, I have to put away all of my like sweaters and hoodies that I've been living in for months and break out all of the tank tops and shorts that have been um, wasting away in the corner of my closet. So I I do have to switch it out. You know, there's another another phrasal verb, switch Switch out. out. I do have to switch out my clothes depending on the season. Um, But the two phrasal verbs that this made me use when I was trying to um, describe this action Um, put away, like put stuff in storage and then break out, meaning take stuff out of storage. But then we realize these two phrasal verbs have so many different meanings and they are so useful on IELTS for a lot of different topics. Yes, absolutely. And it's like you were just saying, you have to get that idiomatic language, you guys, and phrasal verbs are a great way to do that. Most phrasal verbs are idiomatic, right? It's pretty yeah. rare. Sometimes there is one that like, you know, start out just means the same as start, basically. That's not <laughs> <Right>. really idiomatic. <laughs> totally. But most of them are like, you can't really tell the meaning of it from the words, right? They they have all these crazy meanings. They mean something else. So we're going to share several today that are going to help you get that seven or higher from vocabulary. Totally. Um, but as a side note, you said start out. I just thought of the perfect antonym phrasal verb finish up. It means the Ooh. same as finish. Why do we have these Wait, extra cool. prepositions on there? Um, <laughs> but just some bonus bonus vocabulary for you guys. So, okay, let's start with some definitions and ideas for where they go on IELTS for the phrasal verb put away. So as we mentioned, the first definition is to put something in storage or to put something in a container where it belongs, like... If I'm describing, you know, house chores, Um, if I ask James to do something, I'm like, James, can you please put away the clean dishes or put away the stuff that's in the dishwasher, right? Put the stuff where it belongs. I'm sure as a parent, we say this to our kids all the time. Put away your clothes, put away your toys. 
Absolutely. And I can imagine like a part two question asking you to describe a tour, a chore, describe some housework. You're definitely going to want this verb because a lot of what we do during the day is putting away sheets, putting away clean laundry, putting mm -hmm. away, you know, your kids toys that are out. So this yep. would be a great phrasal verb for that type of question. Yeah. And there are part one questions about um, like, what are your responsibilities at home? Did mm. you have to do chores when you were a child? Or even in speaking part three, what if you are describing um, gender roles in relationships? right? Like that could be an amazing speaking part three topic or writing task two topic. You could be like, you know, traditionally the woman has to <laughs> put away all of the clothes and toys and dishes. But luckily, um, my partner believes that he should also have to put stuff away. <laughs> Nice. I would love that on a part three answer. <laughs> That's awesome. But there right. are more meanings to this phrasal yeah. verb, right? So the next one, we use this to I mean eat a lot, right? <laughs> if you're starving, you could say, I could really put away a lot of food right now. It just means I could eat a lot. Um, this is so perfect, guys, to describe any person that eats a lot. Um, and I know that this is very high scoring because it is very rare for a student to use this phrasal verb, guys, in this way. Um, I would describe my son as he, yep, if I described him in speaking part two, I'd be like, you know what, right now he is 11 years old going on 12. There's some good vocab. He's almost 12. 11 years old going on 12 and he really puts away the food. He, oh my gosh, when I make pasta, oh, okay, I made pasta a couple nights ago. He put away almost an entire pot of pasta. I am not even making that up. I am so shocked by how much a growing adolescent boy eats. <laughs> this reminds me when my when we were younger, my brother, when he was like a teenager, my mom would always have a big Tupperware of spaghetti in the fridge. She's like, you can eat that at any time if you're starving. Don't eat all of this other totally. stuff that like I'm planning on using to make a meal. I'm going to have to start doing that. Yep. So um, anyway, guys, you describe people a lot on IELTS, maybe general training, task one letters, but definitely speaking part one and part two. So any person you're describing, if they eat a lot, you could be like, you know, I can't even tell you how much this person eats. He or she can really put it away or be specific. He can really put away so much pasta. Nice. Awesome. So good. All right. This next one is a, is about sports. When we score a goal, we say we put it away, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So like, for example, if you're talking about a time you scored a goal playing soccer or whatever sport, you could say, everyone was so stoked when I put it away. That means yeah. you kicked the ball into the net, you scored a goal. Totally. Um, so again, useful in speaking part one, talking about exercise, sports, physical activity. When you're, um, if you're talking about a sport you play, I do think this is, no, I was going to say it's specific to soccer, but it's not because I just was watching basketball the other day and they were yep. like, he put away three, three pointers. So yeah, this is applicable to all sports when you are scoring points. Yep, exactly. And the next one is when someone is put in jail or prison. This is how Jessica used it at the at the top of the episode. <laughs> Asking ask me a if very I were weird put away. Yes. <laughs> we say they are put away for a long time if they're going to jail for a while. Yeah. So speaking part three, writing task two. Um, you could be asked about crime and punishment, right? Weird topic for some reason, common on IELTS. Uh, but if you say, you know, like for um, felonies that involve harming other people, I think they should be put away for longer periods of time, for example. Nice. All right, let's move on to our next phrasal verb here, break out. I love that there are some parallels here in um, it being an antonym to put away. So um, the first meaning of put away was to put something in storage. That is the antonym for breaking out, right? To bring something out of storage. So um, going back to that subscriber question, I said, we put away cold clothes and break out the warm ones. So they are easy to remember in pairs like this. Yes. That's why I think these two really complement each other. 
I used this just this week. We, my daughter wanted to try rollerblading, rollerblading. So I had to break out my daughter's skates that I packed away like eight years ago because now the younger ones have grown into it, right? So That's we awesome. always use this phrasal verb. If something's been put away for quite a while, yeah. then we're going to get it out. We say we break it out. Yeah, but that's a good point. Um, it is usually used to describe something that has been put away for a while. It's not just right. like a normal thing like, oh, I'm going to break out this pen I use every day. Like that wouldn't make sense. Um, if you're describing like throwing a party in speaking part two, you could say like, I want to break out the fancy china, the fancy dinnerware we have. We almost never use it, but I'm going to break it out for this special occasion. Yes. Awesome. And then the next meaning is when something starts suddenly, like a fight or a war, we say it breaks out. If there's some kind of skirmish battle, it comes sort of out of nowhere. That's when we would use this and say something broke out. I love that you said skirmish. What a fantastic <laughs> uh, synonym for fight. I love that word skirmish. That's so high level. Yes, absolutely. You guys should use this if ever. I can imagine on part two being asked to describe a time maybe that you argued with a friend, right? And it's even a skirmish or like a fight that would break out is not always physical, right? It can be yeah. an argument. It can be just a time you weren't getting along with someone. That's true. That's true. Um, I do think we usually use it for like physical sort of fights though, but you're right. No, you definitely could use it if it's just a verbal argument for sure. For sure. Um, okay. Okay. Now we have two more definitions for you guys. Um, if you are asked to describe celebrities or talking about famous people, this comes up on the test, right? Speaking part three, discussing, um, you know, the privacy rights of famous people or celebrities, for example. Um, to describe the famous person itself, himself, herself, you could say like they were a breakout star in 1992 to describe the time when they first became super famous. Um, we say like they really broke out in the early 2000s or they were the breakout star of last year. So it's really this idea of like when you suddenly become famous. Yes. And you can use it to describe, for example, it, imagine this sentence. If you're like, I thought this actor was a breakout star this year. And then I found out he's been acting since he was a child. This oh, nice. happened for, there was an actor in everything, everywhere, all at once yeah. that a lot of people thought was a breakout star. And turns out he was data in Goonies. Like, no, he's been acting a long time. Oh my gosh, I just want to take a moment to just show my appreciation for him. He is so wonderful. Awesome. His acceptance speech was so lovely. And his whole message, guys, you should watch this on YouTube. Um, his whole message was just like, I've been working so hard for so long. And I thank you for welcoming me back into, you know, Hollywood and keep following your dreams. And I just, I love so him so much. It's so motivating. Yes. Yes. Go <laughs> listen to that speech to like motivate yourself about your own dreams for sure. And watch that movie, Everything, yes. Everywhere, All at Once. It is so weird. It is totally like uh, for Aubrey and I, this is our jam. It I is. I loved it. So much. So good and I'm weird. I'm so happy and awesome. it swept the awards. Yes. It was amazing. It deserved, oh, well deserved. So good. <laughs> okay. Anyway, one last definition for you guys. So here is another parallel as an opposite to put away. So we said um, somebody can be put away in prison, right? To be put in jail. Well, if they escape, they break out. So if they escape from jail or prison, they break out of jail or prison. And honestly, I can't see this being super useful on IELTS unless you're describing a movie or TV show that you watched. Maybe a which... relative, a relative who broke out of prison. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We've Again, all got one. We've all got that one relative. I don't think this is very applicable to most people. But... <laughs> <laughs> no judgment if it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, whatever. I go for it. Um, <laughs> describe that crazy uncle who broke out of jail in Kentucky. I don't know. I don't know why I thought Kentucky. Um, but anyway, so that's the last definition, guys. Probably the least useful on IELTS, but it's good to remember them in pairs so you remember more 
vocabulary. Um, all right, guys. Remember, you can see our entire Three Keys IELTS course. Go to allearsenglish.com slash keys. Send us a question and we can give you a shout out in a future episode like Beauty Passion, who followed us on YouTube. Uh, send us an email, guys. Support at allearsenglish.com or just go to YouTube, hit subscribe, and then leave a comment. Awesome. Thanks, Jessica. Fun one. We'll see Thanks, you Aubrey. next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye.